Hey everybody, Todd Bettenhausen here. We're through our input lag testing on the uh, NEC projectors that I chose, the NPV260Xs. And now I've moved on into the, the design phase for the, the projector mounts and the screen frame and also the cockpit itself. <clears throat> and everything starts here. Um, sitting down here at my desk at work, I've done some work in SOLIDWORKS. I actually carried it a lot of the modeling here, which I really appreciate, but we sat down and we consulted and we uh, like most projectors, this, this projector came with very comprehensive setup information including mathematical formulas for helping with placement and positioning and imaging, image size and so forth. So we've got a, a CAD model here of three projectors. Um, it has a lot of design intent packaged into it. I can change the horizontal width of the screen and it'll change throw distances, the height of the image, etc. So really I can kind of work backwards from, from what the projectors are capable of to the design of, of the supporting equipment. And before I, before I get to, uh, I'm going to clean the screen up here, but before I do that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of show what some of this stuff you're seeing here is. This is the floor. This datum plane down here is actually the floor. <clears throat> and the reason it was important to do that is because there's another plane here which represents my eye height when I'm seated in the cockpit. And that's this one right here. And it's 60% of the way up the, the height of the screen. That's the eye racing default. You're slightly high of center. So knowing those two figures and the, the geometry of how the projectors uh, throw images, we're locked in to a certain set of conditions based on the throw distance and the way the projector documentation was written. They started with the screen width and forgive me, all this is in millimeters and the reason it is is because the screen frame is going to be modeled using metric extrusion from 8020. So I'll go ahead and uh, click on this dimension and if I want a larger screen size then and if you if you work this out it's going to be uh, I believe we're at 30 inches right now uh, English units. Let me just go uh, oh, 44. So we'll go ahead and change that dimension and then we'll rebuild the model. And you can see that the throw distance is increased, the screen size increased, everything followed along due to the relations that are built into the CAD model. Now if we look at this thing from the top, You can see that I've defined three screens, three by one affinity array. The side angle is 60 degrees. That means if I were to draw a line from the outer edge of each outer screen from here across to here, my eye point would be right there. And this will allow me to de determine whether or not there's sufficient room in the cockpit. Um, I want to keep these projectors as close as possible, not due to a space limitation, I'm putting this in a large room. But for a few more practical reasons, if you're at that, at that eye point that I just described, it doesn't matter how big your screens are. If everything's set up for, for true-to-life representation of, of what the sim is rendering, bigger screens only get you further distance. And in this case, you know, we have a further throw distance to deal with also. So I'm actually going to shrink this thing down as, as tight as I can get it. And another thing that gets me... When looking at this thing from the side, it's going to gain me some height right here in this critical area where the frame crosses over my knees. I need to make sure I need to make sure that the frame is going to actually clear my shins or my knees, however it all ends up when, when things are said and done here. But the way we modeled the light coming out of these projectors, The way we model light coming out of these projectors, we, uh, we can tell if we're going to have any obstructions from any of the equipment. I'm probably going to have some vertical braces somewhere near this vertex. And I want to make sure that they don't throw any shadows on the, on the images as they're projected from behind. So it's pretty cool to do this work up front because you can actually know exactly what you're going to get. So let me go ahead and... Go ahead and clean this up. Okay, now we can get a little bit better look. 
um, you can see that the light area, the projected area is, is semi-transparent and that's so that when I start to build around this thing with 80-20 we're going to be able to uh, make sure that, that we don't have any problems with, with shadows as I said. So right here is where all the action is going to happen. Basically we're, we're creating three very large four to three monitors with no bezels, 180 degree field of view, everything true size, true shape. <clears throat> Short throw distance is going to equal brighter images. I think I'll be able to run fine in the daytime with my gray um, rear projection screen material. So it's time to start designing all the goodies that hold this stuff up. And that involves that involves our good friend the the 8020 catalog, one of my favorite things. So I'm going to find everything I need over the course of the next day or two, place an order on Monday, and the next thing we should see is a CAD model of this thing looking pretty complete. It's going to be one big piece that holds the screens and the projectors and the screen material, and another piece that holds me and all the controls. So that's where I'm headed. See you next time.